paper magic will survive like the heat death of the universe and will... <laughs> oh, it's a smuggler's copter. Would you like to crew this? And then it crashes because they don't understand arithmetic. All your cards belong to me. Two minutes into Mason him in the eyeballs, I switched to pepper spray. He's like, yeah, it's downright refreshing. And went back to the race. Magic is dying. I'm done. <laughs> Selling everything. I might be a hoarder. And yes. I don't have the crayons or glue to explain this to you right now. <laughs> Were you going to die twice? Oil Just... would be worthless before magic cards would. Well, okay, Dr. Man. That's Mr. <laughs> Dr. Professor Jason. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome in to Brainstorm Brewery. Look, a couple weeks ago, we missed an episode, and we were not going to let that happen this week. So though we were balancing schedules, and I am a bit under the weather, we are here. We are podcasting. And you know why? Because they say the sky is falling. But we'll we can, get to that. We can milk the corp in his dead bit one more time if you actually die. <laughs> Just... We can... It is Halloween. We can continue to drain that juice yeah. straight out of the fruit like it is it is how die in real life give us content well that's dj i'm corbin Cass is here as well we are going to bring you an excellent episode of brainstorm brewery and we've got a lot to talk about because uh as i mentioned sky is falling upper register there uh troll and toad a long time vendor and i don't even know like vendor like i'm a vendor like they're like a an industry behemoth right or at least were at times in the past. Uh, and they announced this. They week. still are in terms of like just industry and the definition right. of just gaming. Trading. Yeah, yeah. Not magic specific, right? Um, so the thing is, they have announced that they are, are backing off for the Magic the Gathering entirely. The the decision, the I'm going to read, I'm going to quote this here. The decision to stop by Magic the Gathering singles and sealed product was based on a number of factors the primary one was that selling magic was simply not as profitable as it once was, and other TCGs like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and One Piece were doing better. Also, the constant reprinting of valuable cards and the number of variants of these cards made buy list pricing difficult and sometimes resulted in buying cards at a loss as new pre- reprints were announced. Scroll and Toad Management was also spooked by the reprinting of non-tournament legal reserved list cards in Magic the Gathering 30th Anniversary Edition. That is the announcement from Troll and Toad announcing that they are pulling out of Magic entirely. Now, I want to add the addendum to this that uh, somebody um, who is familiar with the company and who is in fact a longtime vendor themselves uh, noted that the owner of Troll and Toad who made this decision is not the original owner. The original owners uh, have left at some point over the past 30 years for various reasons. Uh, and, and from this person's perspective, uh, Magic is still profitable but you have to change. Uh, it's, uh, that, that's essentially the gist of their post, that you have to try to adapt with the times and that it is still profitable, uh, and that they're yeah, sad I to mean, see Troll and Toad go. The the quote is from Jim Brusso, who is a very, very long-standing member of the community. He's been dealing magic cards since before I was born. Um, and just sort of the, the overall point is that the person who made this decision at the head of Troll and Toad generally it just has a lot more interest in Pokemon as a franchise and as a industry. Like it's, I think it is less, uh, the sky is falling and more just like, I know this game better. So I will focus on this because magic has become harder, which is true. Magic is a lot harder to make more money on nowadays yeah. than it was five yeah. or eight, 10 years ago. I have people ask me a lot just, Oh, DJ, how did you get your start in this? How, how can <laughs> I do replicate the same things you did? And like step one, don't, and step two is just it's like impossible. a lot of, oh, well, like yeah, a lot of the moves and decisions and factors that led to me growing and like setting foot in this space like can't be replicated anymore. And that's not a testament to my skill set so much as just the the way the market works and just how just how things worked back in the day compared to now. I mean, you, it's so much harder to like oh just go find collections on Craigslist. It, yeah. It's like it's like when your parents tell you to like just go and shake the manager's hand. <laughs> like just just That's go exactly in and right. put your resume on the table and just give them a give them the old eye contact and just show them your gusto and like it, it, it is the handshake. same exact analogy whenever someone asks me how to get a start in the industry i always say just start 10 years ago it's not that hard yeah it's not that hard yeah simple. just have 10 years of industry contacts and goodwill and you know it's, it's not that bad oh huh. that's uh well that was a very uplifting little segment I don't know though. So I mean, so so the takeaway that I'm hearing from all of that is that magic is not what it once was in terms of I don't know the right word. 
profitability is maybe the right word, but maybe just like I would say simplicity. Yeah, yeah. like like ease of of like um, training your employees to do it. Like the thing yeah, about automation about, is a lot like yeah. automation is a lot harder of a like a hard start of like you need to be able to automate a lot of things, and if you don't, you will get buried and waste a million hours of your time. Also, like when it comes to building foundational knowledge in this industry starting from zero is so much harder now than it used to be like it used to be someone would come in if they had a lot of you know a lot of gusto they could learn everything they needed to know for like a pretty basic understanding in like a six month period if they had a good mentor and now it's just like there's so many things to know there's so much information that isn't really available even to the people who are actively doing this uh, well, it makes everyone... sense that a company is big and is as not agile as Troll and Tobe want to move into something where they have expertise already and where it's a little bit easier to bring people on. Yeah. And we should know that them not taking it now doesn't mean they won't take it in the future. That said, let's take it from this perspective. Does Wizards care about this? Does this make did this make any waves at all inside of Wizards? Probably not. There's probably like a memo between some of our management people, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, th this was a mess. This was a post in Slack that had like seven emojis max reply. Yeah. Okay. Three of the emojis were eye rolls, and four of them were like brain explode. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah. I mean, it. Look, I, I asked that because there's the one. There's the one eggplant by the guy who always replies with an eggplant, <laughs> and you just need him to stop. Like, come on, Gary, don't do that. Like, yeah, Gary, HR needs to talk to you again. Let's <laughs> let's stop it with the eggplants. No one wants your aubergine, bud. I, I, I took it from, I asked it from that angle because I don't, you know, we get a lot of, we hear a lot of negative feedback about the current state of how cards are printed by vendors. And I can't help but wonder if inside of Wizards, it's like, you know what we do? We print secret layers and we mail them directly to our customers. Y'all can go get bent. Like, number go up. You know, like, it, 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 I, I, you know, I don't know, like, but but if your end model is going to be direct sales and it's sure getting, there, there's more releases than ever. There's full commander decks that are direct sale. Like, you really, I'm not going to say you don't need Troll and Toad because maybe you never, quote, needed them, but you really don't need them now. So, yeah, I don't know. I Like, all of this is to say I don't know how to, to sort of look at this in the larger context of magic. Um, so let's uh, DJ you said the sky's not falling but uh, I don't know is it cloudy out like this doesn't seem like good news I, I've i mentioned this before in the past but I strongly disagree with the one of the points of oh they we are scared of reserved list stuff because of 30th anniversary or what have you I, I don't see that as a valid argument whatsoever I think that if they were going to rip that band-aid off and undo the reserved list that was where to do it that this is not a playing a game of oh let's just poke and see and test the waters and right. then do like that was the 30th anniversary celebration at vegas that is that yeah. is where you shoot the fireworks off and yeah just pull a big like blanket over a black lotus that's black border and everyone goes why oh. like and, and especially since i believe that at the 25th anniversary like they were up front that they like quote unquote emptied the vaults when they did all the beta drafts or whatever, right? Like obviously I'm sure yeah. something exists somewhere. Like, but when they found that um I don't remember legends or whatever in a warehouse and it went Dominaria United collector boosters, they literally found that in a warehouse. They do not have yeah. just infinite old things sitting back. So you're right, like that was their well, thing for thirtieth. anniversary. And this whole like strong arm push for more new stuff. <laughs> is is not like attracting it's not attracting the same crowd is like you know what if we reprint the reserve list like we need to get back those six, 60 and 70 year old gamers like yeah, no they're, exactly. they're, that, that's not the same yeah. like line of play there you need more people who were posting on tumblr about super hulock for like the last decade than you need <laughs> some 60 year old guy who sees his magic cards as the same investment class as his, like, old Civil War gun collection. <laughs> right, like, they they already got all of his money. Like, they, they right, he's done. Yeah, he is, yeah. they squeezed him dry, and it's like, hey, next person, which, like, it right. does suck if you feel disenfranchised like that. I, I understand that the, the sentences I have said on this podcast up until this point can sound, like, <laughs> yes. 
like they have a lack of empathy or whatever, and and I get that. And adding or whatever at the end certainly doesn't help with that. <laughs> but, <Or> whatever. <laughs> but I I get it. I I understand that, and it it does suck to feel like you are being thrown away as a customer, and like your money doesn't <sighs> matter anymore. And I, that is what it is. It it just. There, yeah. There's plenty of other hobbies that will want your money, and there I can promise that if you expand and diversify your interests, there are probably plenty of other games or hobbies or just activities that you will find j- joy to spark, and it's you just got to adapt. Yeah. Well, and, and the flip side of this, right, is that the Doctor Who levels of excitement are off the charts. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. We'll get to that. I think I said this... I think I said this last week, but every time I see a Doctor Who spoiler, I get, like, a little angry inside. Then I try and remember how I felt when I saw the Nazgul's. Yeah. And I try and be nice about it. And so <laughs> far, I have not been a dick about it to anybody. And I'm very proud of myself for that. But also, like, I'm going to feel that way about another IP like I did about the Nazgul's. And so this yeah. is just another step in the road. And there's always going to be another step in the road. There's always <laughs> going to be someone who's mad about Doctor Who and then freaks out about Fallout, you know? Yeah. Or, um... The Princess Bride? Was that real? The Evil Dead one kind of rocks, actually. I, I'm going to be completely honest. It's really hard for me to know what is I believe the Princess Bride one is real. Okay, yeah, like, it is What real. is real and what is parody? Is IHOP real? Yes. Are the I Chandra saw those Pancakes in at Vegas. real? Okay. I one? saw those in person at, at Vegas. Did you have them? Uh, somebody brought them up to me and just wanted to show them off. They're they're pretty cool. The like the counters are nice with a um, like they're nice quality plus one plus one counters to use as wait, a game wait wait back up back up i thought you just like got pancakes and they were called chandra's pancakes oh that's, that's also how tie in yeah yeah oh so you can go to ihop and get the chandra pancakes and or you can do the activity at vegas and they will give you these coins that are pancakes on one side and plus one counters on the other well you that's a valuable investment opportunity dj it's true you know what's sad is that like 15 years ago, that would have been true. We used to talk about all the time on this show about how the most random assortment of magic collectibles had value. I still have a hundred fat pack boxes in my closet. Oh, I'll do you one better, shit. Corbin. I still have packages of uh, Friday Night Magic M and M's from the original Innistrad <laughs> okay. that are probably just like bio okay. weapons at this point. Yes, but... <laughs> yes. It's like giving somebody a 20 year old soda. It's actually like toxic at that point. They're still sealed. Oh, wait, if, if you're an astute uh, viewer, you can see a, a Jigglypuff soda on the Jigglypuff shelf over there that I got, like, four years ago. So that one's uh, maturing well, but... um, It's so, aging like a fine wine. And now you don't have your, your pancake coins. You know, it's it's kind of a huge punt on Watsy's part to partner with IHOP for this, when Magic players love Waffle House way more. That's true. No one... I, That's I don't not, like, I, regionally I available, though. I like but, like. IHOP. Not I've seen not people at Magic player. tournaments use a Waffle House menu as their playmat. <laughs> like, Waffle House is a part of the culture. IHOP is like the place you end up at after your pre-release. And I love IHOP. No, that's Denny's. Wrong. That's Denny's. No, it's... I mean, they're both places you can end up, but Waffle House is like... It's a it's a part of the culture. You go to a tournament, Only you go to Waffle House. Only for a certain part of the country, though. And I will admit they are creeping north just like 200 years ago, but uh, <laughs> I I will say they are as far north as Pennsylvania now, which I feel like we drew a line and we need that line. But like, I <laughs> In the entirety of my time in Pennsylvania, I never saw a Waffle House or went to a Waffle House. I think I prefer IHOP to Waffle House, but both are fine. You sound off in the comments. Do you are you an IHOP person? Are you a there Waffle you House person? Are you a Denny's person? Are you a Village Inn person? If we were what streaming, we'd be like Inn? type one, type two. Village Inn's like a worse Denny's, but they have good pie. Never heard of that. I will big take pie your fan for it. Worst I I recently learned uh, what a hungry Howie's is, so I am still heard of that broadening my horizons on do, food. Do we have a favorite burger chain? I'm a big Culver's fan. Um. I like Shake Shack. Of course you do. DJ? Shake Shack's good, but it's way too over. We don't have Shake Shack here, so it's a it's a rarity for me. I... Heathens. 
Yeah. We can all agree that Five Guys is overpriced and overrated. Five Guys right? is, yeah, Five correct. Guys is overpriced very, and overrated at, at the extreme end of the, like, yes. I, yeah. I have to get Five Guys, like, once a year to remind myself of that fact, but that's it. That's my limit. Yeah, it just is. I, I like In N Out. Uh, yeah. But I also, but that's also like something not local to me, so it's like a it's like a travel treat. Yeah. Um, my local is Tully's, which is just very good. So I mean, that's like my yeah. upstate New York, like oh, the, they're just go to Tully's. This isn't a burger count. joint, I guess, but I got Brahms around here. I like Brahms. Usually, like I've heard of Brahms. Yeah, in, in any of these discussions, you can't just go like, oh, my local one, like the the one that's only in three states. You wouldn't get it. Like, mm-hmm. no, you my have to... local is the Happy Burger Bun. And you go to Happy Burger Bun. They have the special Happy Burger Bun prints. It's where they oh press God, the they, burger with a brand. They put it. They put a knife in in the burger, and then they give it to you. Oh my God! And the egg yolk runs out, and they have a burger. It's so wacky. It's called the Luther. It's donuts for a bun. It's so avant garde. I understood some of those words. I avant garde. Avant garde. Which Pokemon is that? Is what you say when you you're sword fighting, right? Like there is a sword fighting. There's a really excellent YouTube video titled "That's the Power of the Avant Garde" or something like that. It's like a guy <laughs> talking about drum techniques. Yeah. And it's about how when you're performing, if you just lean into your snare drum and sing "The Lion Sleeps Tonight" for 45 minutes, that's avant garde art. That is all to say that us talking about burgers on a Magic Finance podcast is avant garde art. <laughs> and relevant to magic players well speaking True. of the youtube comments i have an update on something we promised a few weeks ago we asked you for your game recommendations that were and i repeat not magic just anything but the the card game that we talk about for hours on it uh we asked for your recommendations for video games and we're well we but i think it was Cass was going to judge them and the the winner of this uh very biased and unorganized contest is going to receive a twenty dollar gift card to Steam. So, My game's not on Steam. Shut up! You're getting a Steam card. I Shut believe up. the criteria was I would judge it just off the cover of the game, right? It was by the name. It was cool by name. just the name. Okay. Uh, you'll get a little bit more, like one or two sentence context for these. Yeah. Uh, There's eleven but, total. There's eleven. All right. Eleven coming at you here. Am I running through all eleven? Should I, should I read the whole snippets or no, just I, the name? I'm gonna read them for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah awesome. Yeah. Excellent. And I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you up front, I think I've heard of one of the 11. I'll enter my mind palace then. From Max Volume, coolest game, and everyone's going to have an accent, by the way. This might not be their accent, but every character, and this is in the YouTube, because anytime I read the YouTube comments, I just give people accents to make Well, Max, Max Volume's profile picture is a raccoon, so give it a... I think a, it's Star Fox. A rocket, a rocket, a rocket <laughs> accent. Oh, Star Fox. I right, give it a Star Fox. Flippy! Coolest game you've never heard of is Northern Journey. It's a retro-style fantasy FPS. That was the barrel roll. But the real selling point is the atmosphere. It's a happy, sad game with Norwegian folklore. Very good, DJ. All right. So I'm going to judge this on a scale of 1 to 10 based off of vibes and strictly vibes. Uh-huh. I'm going to give this a 7.5. Uh-huh. Uh, I do love retro-style stuff, and I love atmospheric stuff. I don't know that much about Norwegian folklore, so that's kind of where you lost your points. But Trolls. I could be swayed by playing it. I watched that movie. Wild before. Card 2484. Commander Keen was an early PC game that I spent a ton of time playing, but my mom was way better at it than me. He's not really mad that his mom was better at it. He's actually very happy that his mom was better yeah, at it because that wild, was the way they bonded, but that's, that's just the wild way his voice card, works. Wild Card says. Commander Keen, yes. Uh, 10 out of 10. I've actually played a ton of this game. Ooh. I've watched a ton of this game. I've watched speedruns of this game. I've played speedruns of this game. Commander Keen's 10 out of 10. Great music, great vibes. It's probably not actually that good. It's been a long time since I've played it, but like Commander Keen, A plus for me, ten out of ten. Very nice. All right. J Bro, J Bro, J Bro, J Bro, J Bro, Rogue Trip, Vacation twenty twelve. What an amazing cluster of a game. Do you think is the twenty twelve part trip? of the title? Yes. Rogue Trip colon Vacation twenty twelve. Yes. Yeah, so this one's gonna title. be a. Four for me, but depending on if it's like supposed to be a funny game, it goes up to an eight point five. Twenty twelve was a busy year. I don't know if I don't know if they lose points for mentioning that. It, the graphics are are something. Oh, it's a PS one game. Oh, PS one game. This game did, this game did not come out. In, yeah, it didn't come out in twenty twelve. It came out in nineteen ninety eight. 
That's a nine, then. I love yeah. a good, like, yeah. call out to the yeah. future, and then we're just in the and future. And they're like, there's cars flying in the air! Yeah, it's I'm like, watching a, I'm no. watching some gameplay of this right now, and it looks like a PS1 game. Looks pretty Silly cool. Goose, we don't have flying cars 20 years from now. We have something called climate change. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, again. Uh, all right, next up, uh, Cowboy Casanova. Breath of Fire that- on the SNES started my lifelong session with fantasy games RPGs. Cowboy Casanova is like, it's a nine point five, but uh, no, that's their username. Oh, Cap- the username is Cap- what's the Breath game of called? Fire on the SNES. What's it called? Breath of Fire. Just Breath of Fire. Straight. That's a two. Yeah. I, how can you go from Cowboy Casanova to Breath of Fire? Cowboy <laughs> that Casanova was their username. Get your money Corbin, up. Corbin <laughs> named their their username is Cowboy Casanova nineteen eighty seven. Yeah, shut up. I just, and that's why I did the cowboy accent, but uh, yeah. so I, I might have slipped over the title there. No, that's okay. Donner's Donner's for, uh, forty two twenty eight is their username. So this is the game they've been playing. Oh, I've been playing Life of Pot Liza. Oh, what the fuck? I can't do that accent with that title. I've been playing Liza P and Valheim these past few weeks. That's the same accent, but whatever. I'm getting. It's fine. Figure it out. Figure it out. Uh. So I've never seen Valheim be played, but mm-hmm. the name is pretty cool. The name gets like a, it's like a seven for me. Mm-hmm. Lies of P is like a a, a firm one. I've heard Don't of like Lies the name. of P. It had it been recommended to me, but I have watched a full playthrough of it, and the game looks fine. Looks very like, aesthetically cool. Uh, so one for name on Lies of P. Mm-hmm. Game's pretty good. Valheim is a I think I said a seven. Yeah. Have you, I like of, the, have you seen Valheim? I have not, but it feels like a portmanteau. Really- you know? People it's were an, really into it when it came it's out. It's an like, MMO. Uh, it's it's like a Norse MMO. It's like a survive. It's like a survival game. Maybe like a survival game MMO. It was kind of cool. Like I watched a bunch of friends play it. It drew a lot of people away from RuneScape for a month. Yeah, Makes yeah. Sense. No one talks about it now. This is Ment09. Uh, they they suggested best game from PS1 is a 3D fighter called Robo Pit. This. It still plays well despite severely outdated graphics. As you beat opponents, you get to steal. I shouldn't have done the whisper for the longest paragraph. That was my I knew it. <laughs> As you beat opponents, you get to steal one of their weapons. But if they lose, you they steal yours. But if oh, if you lose, they steal yours. Customize your robot with weapons, jump ability, speed, and mo- why am I doing an ad pitch for this game? <laughs> Give it a look. I'm watching a video. 1995 on this one. Robo Pit for me is an 11 out of 10 name. Uh, <laughs> Let me give you a little ASMR, a little beep boop, beep 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 boop. Beep. That's that's the robot pit. And then uh, Dart One Thirty One, Sea of Stars. <sighs> so I don't know anything about the game other than I heard someone say it's a uh, Oblivion in space, which isn't bad to me but sea of stars is a very generic name very middle of the road it's called a five it's like it's evocative a little bit but it's like yeah. generic like octopath traveler could have been called sea of stars and nobody would have blinked octopath traveler to me like octopath is like an interesting combination of words it's eight paths right yeah I guess, but like the, to be a six the point me. is like the, the game could have been called sea of stars people would have played it and then not like question sure. the name Sure. I'm still watching Robo Pit. <laughs> it's the best a game I've played in a while. Oh, I, I keep choosing the worst accents for these. Pikuniku. Piku, Piku I mean, a British person would f up that name, so that, I mean, like, is that. But Pikuniku. Piku, Piku, Piku um, Piku it sounds. It sounds like a game that I wouldn't like. Um. Although I do love Pikachu. See, so my first thought it... was Pikmin. My first thought was Pikmin. Really? And I don't like Olimar Olim- 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 or whatever his name is. I love Olimar. He was great in Smash. Uh, Piku Niku gets a uh, 6.5 out of 10. All right. The All best right. game is definitely... It's either Al or AI. I don't know. A- I, I'm going to say AI. AI Somnium Files. AI Somnium, think, Somnium Files? Isn't this like a horror mystery game? AI Somnium Files? So, 
Somnium is like a good word. I'm a big fan. It's, it's a high dopamine word. So let's go with like a seven for Somnium and a three for everything else in it. Average it out to a five. All right. Uh, the next person suggested Magic the Gathering, Battle Mage, so we're skipping them. <laughs> and that is the last submission. Clearly the winner here was Commander Keen, although I did give, what did I give, Robo Pit an 11? I've got, yeah. I've got, listen, I've got the uh, list here. I've got the list. Oh, Corbin kept track, thank God. Who was our winner? 11 out of 10, the top score was given to Robo Pit. The next top score, 10 out of 10, Commander Keen. And coming in third, maybe a surprise here. Corbin, third place is the same as last place. Uh, So we will give vacation nine point five. We will give a twenty dollars Steam gift card to the winner of the picker of Robo Pit, and then we'll also send you an instruction booklet on how to download Steam and also buy (laughs) a modern machine. And like we'll we'll just teach you how to actually use that, so you're not using it as a bookmark for your nineteen seventy five game. Yep, seems fair. Nineteen seventy five. I don't know. I'd, I'd look, guess they're it. on an Atari. It's about, look, you know. That's fair. The first system I ever played was a Commodore We're going to give you an upgrade to Pong. It's exciting now. It's exciting now. JJ, you can probably clip that as like a, its own like video, too. The great thing about that segment, and it's just a really good life lesson. I know I said it last time when we brought up this segment initially, but the best way to tell if a book is good is to judge it by its cover. And the best way to tell if a game is good is to see if it's called Robo Pit. <laughs> uh, fun, uh, also a fun little add on life hack uh, that also works for people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if your name is Craig, just immediately. Kyle, oh. like F tier. I like Kyle's Wait, generally. They, su- they surprise me. Kyle's Craig are good is, in small doses. Craig is the name of our recording bot. You can't talk shit on Craig. That's why <laughs> or it'll I just delete Craig. this file. I like join the call and he just pops in with now recording and it's the yeah. most annoying thing in the world. Craig yeah. list. <laughs> uh, don't 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 like cancel us though, Craig. Don't you know, AI. Us. Yeah, Craig, we, we're cool, right? <laughs> He's one of the good ones. One, one of the, the good, good robots. Ones. Man, is he all in right, the well, Robo Pit? Was... Are we making Craig <laughs> fight in the Robo Pit? <laughs> Dude, Craig is a veteran of the Robo Pits, all right? He graduated from the Robo Pits to here. He is never going back in those Robo Pits, okay? Well, That's some PS1 backwards. shit. We're the step below the Robo Pits, to be clear, Corbin. <laughs> I'm trying to give I couldn't get he, He's smoking at a bar. It's uh, The Avatar is like a little like bear, too, so just picture like uh, Five Nights at Freddy's bear just smoking at a, at a dive bar, like, couldn't cut it at the f- Robo Pits. Now I gotta f- record a podcast. <laughs> We love you, Craig. Twenty years in the pits. Save me now. Twenty years. My life. God. Well, but but Craig, you're a robot. Is it time just ephemeral for twenty years? (laughs) Oh man! All right. Well, look, that was uh, some non-magic. So I guess we'll get back in with a little magic now. It's time for breaking bulk. Breaking bulk time. Breaking bulk time. Break. 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 Oh yeah, breaking bulk. There's so much good stuff. It's a pick. Breaking bulk. The end. I've got an exciting one that even a robot couldn't guess, but it did because I have a robot that sorts my magic cards for me. Uh, this is a... Uh, what is this set? Innistrad Crimson Vow. It is a green rare, and it has a million lines of text on it. I'm dead on arrival. I don't know any cards in this set. That set had don't. blood tokens. It, this card does not deal with blood tokens. It just is it a, has. Is it a were, werewolf? Werewolf. It's, it is a non creature enchantment. It's a uh, waxing moon. No. Something harvest? Close. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just drop it. Glorious sunrise. Have either of you ever heard of this card? I've never heard of this card. Uh, Buy list no. for around a quarter. Uh, it is a five mana enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose one, and then oh. I'm gonna take a deep breath. Yeah, I remember. Creatures you control get plus one plus one gain trample turn of turn. Target land gets tap add three green till end of turn. Draw a card if you control a creature with power three or greater, or gain three life. I cannot ever imagine choosing that one. So this basically has three abilities. Uh, so it's every turn. It's a mini overrun, a big land ramp, or card draw. Yeah, this card's actually cool. Yeah, I can very easily see this card being uh, the the 
the purchase bucket this card falls into is like person reads it for the first time and knows that like 15 greed cards exist so they think it's good yeah yeah like this is a very like entry level magic player you you're you're somebody who has like bought a commander precon and yeah. you are scrolling through you're like hitting the random button on scryfall or you just learned what edh trick is and you have not like delved into the full depth of cards in the green color that cost five mana and you saw this and you're like that is so many choices and words and abilities and tools buy it and enough people have done that to raise this card from true bulk to around like 50 to 80 cents uh and it's just going to be one of those cards that continues to soak up sales and because these don't enter the market once they come back it like nobody those p players aren't selling their collections yet uh and eventually it's just going to be like a dollar 50 or so and it's it might hit a reprint in a commander deck at some point because it definitely is that kind of card yeah, but yeah. until then you can just kind of remember that it's worth a buck or two on a buy list well and this has the cool templating where these enchantments instead of triggering just on your upkeep like these sort of cards historically would they triggered the beginning of combat on your turn you yeah. it immediately, and it allows them to put more combat oriented effects on them so it's a neat little design on top of you know everything else yeah i mean i can see people uh also just keyword searching scry or keyword searching combat in scryfall for the, all those decks that are sort of red green and have this theme of uh relentless assault after assault yeah. And you just get combat step after combat step, and the the synergy electrons in your brain go, oh, I can do this multiple times per turn, and I can make all these lands tap for all this mana and untap lands with uh, yeah. like uh, bear umber or whatever, and you're you're doing all these things with attack triggers. I can definitely see that too. Yeah. All right, Cass, what are you looking at? I have a Wilds of Eldraine, white uncommon. Oh no. Uh, F F six. No, I'm out. not F sixing because this is mine. This okay. is unacceptable. Oh, this is intolerable. Hello. It's Stroke of Midnight. It's Stroke of Midnight. Now I need a new pick. <laughs> is that the <laughs> like? Is that the better Beast Within one? Yes. Uh, better generous gift. More like it. Whatever. I'm technically correct, which is a kind of uh -huh. correct. It is like the yeah, best kind. They say. I said whatever. I didn't say you're wrong. <laughs> Many people are saying. I actually had a second breaking bulk that I forgot about. I had it earlier. This one if does not want. hit lands though, which is the uh True. The one where it's, you can't yeah. nick, you can't blow up their nick those with their guy's cradle. But how often do you hit a land? Five percent of the time or less? Well, I I would say that five percent matters more than the stat difference between yeah. a one one and a three three. Probably. I, agree. Yeah, I think I probably agree with you. It is also worth noting that the foils of this card are a minimum of, like, $5 uh, market price. So, I mean, the TCG low is, like, a couple dollars. But the, the point is you can sell the foils of these for, like, upwards of 5 to $7, depending on if it's the regular foil or the promo pack foil. There's only two foil versions of this so far, fingers crossed. <laughs> but, yeah, you can just chuck your promo pack one up there for a lot of money if you're a direct seller to see what happens. All right, I'm coming in with a... I, I've, I've swapped here, um, but I didn't swap that much. It's a white uncommon. And this... Uh, it's from Phyrexia. All will be with you. Uh, is there, like, a suture priest of that set? Nope. Is it the sinew brawler guy, the one that gets double strike? No. Uh, is there, like, though. a... I'm just thinking of other white uncommons from other sets that are good, and if they made a yeah. version of the... Is there like a battle screech of Phyrexia all be one that just no, makes like No, but you light will tokens? you listen, you will get there this way like eventually. Like your uh, your, is your process the, is sound. It's is a, it the banishing it's an, light of the set like the O-ring version. Oh, oh, you're getting closer. You're getting closer. It's uh, similar to a card we talked about before the cast. Also a white card. You're starting to remember something from like 40 minutes no, ago. I, I, I understand. Am... I understand. Uh, I can claim victory anytime, DJ. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll give it to you. Ossification. Oh, yeah. That, card, it's, it, that card's yeah. so good. I forgot that card was from Albi. I keep thinking it's from March of the Machine. Yeah, it does seem like a mom card, to be honest. But, um,. Yeah, it's sweet. Two mana enchant land you control. I was referring to on thin ice. DJ. This counts when I say O-ring effect. That's what I yeah, said. Yeah, it does count. There. But it doesn't. Listen, no. Listen. 
This is not an O-ring effect. This is an Onth and Ice effect because you have to enchant a land. Not an O-ring. It's a Chain to the Rocks. You're right. Chain to the Rocks. I am claiming technical victory on this one. I say meh. Meh is what I say. And I also say that if you enjoyed any of these picks or any of the Magic Finance we've been talking about so far, you should go check out mtgstocks.com, our generous sponsor, the number one source for Magic uh, financial insights outside of this podcast. Blah, blah, blah. But listen, if you want uh, information, stats, data tracking over a decade long, MTG Stocks is your place. And the premium side allows you to set up alerts and uh, more customization options to really let you stay a step ahead. So please what go check out MTG set an alert Stocks. For? How would I set an alert and what would I want to set an alert for? Well, a price alert, some might say, DJ, so that you could be aware of when uh, things are starting to move. And then I could spend less time on Magic and more time on Robo Pit. Is that what you're no, saying? On Robo Pit. That's I correct. I could just yeah. sit there and play Robo Pit for 12 hours a day and just have the website tell me when my cards reach a certain price. And, and you mean, won't. Isn't that get... what you do now with RuneScape and with your RuneScape. cards running robot? But listen, DJ. And the good news, DJ, is if you're playing Robo Pit, you won't get bored because I looked while I was watching that gameplay video. They have different. Uh, climate settings on the levels. You can play in the spring, you can play in the summer, you can play in the snow. Always liked playing in the snow. Wouldn't your machine get Spe rusty? No, you, you Speaking go to of a, snow. You, you go to a football game, you turn the snow settings all the way up. It's the most fun to play for those. Go ahead, Cass. Speaking of snow, we were just talking about uh, on thin ice and ossification. <laughs> uh, magic finance. I'm just trying I'm just trying to steer the bus back, that's all. <laughs> Well, uh, we should probably talk about Doctor Who. Uh, what is an ossification? It's being turned to bone, I believe. Is that true? Yeah. That's metal as fuck. Well, I mean, it's how Ellis the... like turns things into like the you know the white bone stuff. Yeah. Bone. I, it bone... makes sense because like I get the prefix now with osseable, yeah. but like yeah. um, that's that's so Oss cool. ossification is the process of bone formation. Yeah. Uh, that's also yeah. like one of the most horrifying diseases known to man. I think. That's a thing where if there's like a disease where like the the non bone parts of your body just turn to bone and you eventually get trapped in your own like skeleton. Cool. I think it was a Black Mirror episode. I know it kept me up at night when I was eight years old. Just the thought of that happening to me, just one of those things that drills into your head and you just like think about your own mortality for the first time when you're a kid. You remember when we were kids and spontaneous combustion was a thing that was talked about a lot of people. And as soon it was as like a stopped, real concern. And as soon as people stopped smoking in their homes, suddenly it disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like I'm not joking I've done a lot of research into it yeah. like, they used to think that like there used to be scientific explanations they try to come up with for how the human body could just ignite because people would just melt to death in their chairs with no cigarette or whatever but what happens is if you fall asleep with a cigarette and whatever happens it eventually would like burn the because uh, they couldn't figure out how like only the chair would be burned and the body, right? And not the room, you know? But they eventually figured out that the human body, once it started burning, but was in a sitting position, basically just formed a little bowl, essentially, where all the melted parts would melt <laughs> downward. I'm not joking, would melt downward. And this is how the fire would not spread because it essentially became a human candle. Where Craig all of the from wax Louisiana became a human bread bowl for fire. Where, where it became a human candle. Right. And all of it just like dripped inward. And that's how you'd end up with a bunch of burned chairs on the ground and the whole the rest of the room wouldn't even have like major smoke damage. Right? Like and they <laughs> They thought people were spontaneously combusted. And then they and then people stopped smoking in their homes and all of a sudden it wasn't a concern. But that was the thing that kept me up. I saw like a unsolved mysteries episode. You know, where they went into someone, the, the causes of spontaneous combustion and terrified me. That has to be a CSI episode, too. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Like, it's a forensic files thing where they spend 50 minutes and then, like, the last clue 48 minutes in is, like, the the ex-wife was removed three times being like, yeah, he was a big smoker. And then they're like, <laughs> oh, god damn it, son of a bitch. Like, oh, it makes sense. <laughs> All of his belly fat just melted. It makes sense. <laughs> Right. Well, that was really graphic. JJ, maybe you can uh, button over some of that with some beep. 
Elliot from Law and Order punches at least four people in the interrogation room in that four episode. Yeah. I mean, we were supposed to talk about Doctor Who, and then that happened. I don't know. Maybe it's after hours. But here we are talking about Doctor Who. Did you know that there are 1,100 different printings of cards in this set? Aren't, like, 200 of them just the surge foils or something? I mean, probably. I just saw the tweet going around that there, mm-hmm. you know, are 1,100 unique variants of cards in yeah. this. Not a set, by the way. A commander I- room. Every surge think... foil is its own collector number. I mean, I that's actually good, I think. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like, being able to search cards by collector number is just good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't even that... think that's a high... I mean, I'm sure it's a high score for a commander product, but, like, I, it feels like less of a big information drop than, like, when we got whatever Commander Legends or Commander Masters was. Right. Like, I remember yeah. something like something, something, 10,000 SKUs, and I was like, neat. <laughs> just like the, the dead inside, just like the, the well, John Oliver gif of just yeah. cool. Yeah. There are four Commander decks, right? Yes. For Doctor Who? So that's yes, like 400 that's cards. Sure. Assume that's like 350-ish unique cards. Sure. Probably Double that, right. that's seven. Double that, that's 700, because it's the search foil of each one. You know, yeah, we're not that far there. off from a thousand. Oh, I was You're probably, probably hoping you were going to go into the WrestleMania math. <laughs> so you get David Tennant and you get Matt Smith in the same room, and we are not the same. I'm a freak of nature. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've done Steiner math. Forgive me, fans of Steiner math. <laughs> but then the Undertaker dropped from the Undertaker through mankind off Hell in a Cell. Yeah, Eccleston is not my concern. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, well, I like Doctor Who. I'm really excited for these. The rest of the world seems to be excited for them as well. I really want to do a set uh, a set review with somebody who understands and is has the lore of Doctor Who, just deep knowledge. It's but me. I'm the per- but no, I'm going to be the person that explains the lore to them for every card. Perfect. Let's do it, DJ. <laughs> I'm like a name the episodes kind of guy on Doctor Who. So, like, this will be perfect. That'll be a great week for me to not be on the cast. <laughs> oh, it'll be a little segment. It'll be fun. But look, what do we want to get back to in regards to magic here? This They also have collector boosters for these this time around. Yeah. So it's weird. Like, it is a commander release, and yet commander releases now have collector boosters? Question mark? This is where you do that. Right. It makes it, sense. I mean, it absolutely makes sense. They wanted to be able to open a foil the 12th Doctor or whatever, you know? Yeah, and they want people to, they want to be able to, like, have a display, yeah. right? Uh, so it makes sense. Um, it, I don't know. It feels like a full set release, though, right? Yeah. Uh, which so, is fine. It just is what it is. So it's one a- of the very niche finance applications of this set, uh, and it's new to Magic as a concept, not super new to the industry of collectibles as a whole, but we kind of got a taste of this during the Lord of the Rings set release. What I am talking about is doing your research as to where the actors, voice actors, people that these cards resonate with uh, from a like media perspective, finding out where these people will be in their homes. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, find Talking out where they'll be like for, for signings uh, at their events, at their mm-hmm. comic cons, at that kind of thing. Get the card to that person and then be the first person in line to get it on eBay or get it on whatever sure. platform you're selling on, StockX, that kind of thing, and just monetize being the first person to have, like, oh, I am just the, the first one to have my Frodo signed and graded and, and just shoot your shot. Like, get that, just get that premium and be... You're, you're only going to get the premium if you're one of the first yeah. because yeah. once there's a lot, then there's not really a coolness factor to it, but... It's also you, worth noting... Some okay. actors don't sign a lot, just in general. Sure. Yes. Um, for Lord of the Rings, the weekend of Lord of the Rings release, there was a convention local to me that had Elijah Wood, Sean Astin, and Andy Serkis. And Andy Serkis doesn't sign that much, from what I remember. Yeah, so just, like, if you happen to be able to monetize that, that is a weird little niche option you can take. Yeah. That Something to keep in mind. Not many people are going to think about, I don't think. Yeah. This feels like it's going to be bigger than Warhammer, bigger than... I don't know about bigger than Lord of the Rings, since Lord of the Rings was, was a full set, but this definitely feels like it's going to be huge. The The crossover between the fandoms is massive in a way that even, like, Warhammer 
Yeah. Warhammer fans are already broke. Doctor <laughs> Who fans are not. Uh, all right. Well, let's, before we get out of here this week, let's wrap up with some picks of the week. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. Pick of the week. It's time for the pick of the week. I'll start things off. I'm looking back at Commander Masters, working on my weekly winners article for TCG Player, and I've noticed that this card is about three dollars. It's early. Commander Masters just came out, but it's it's actually low key doubled from its low point. Uh, and that card is for the ancestors. It's three fifty right now. It's three mana, green instant. Choose your creature type. Top six. Reveal any number of the chosen type. Put them into your hand, and then flashback uh, for four mana so look it's nothing incredible but it's just a very good refill card uh in a creature deck and it's seen a lot of momentum like it fell down to a dollar 50 a dollar 75 um and it's back up to 350 and just a really nice little solid graph so like i don't think it's anything crazy but it's definitely you know a new uh creature type card to, to if you're somebody who enjoys those decks it'll back be $5. in my day we played lead the stampede I remember. and we liked it we did it was good yeah, we got like four elves off of it. It felt amazing. All right. All right. My pick this week is Scion of Draco. Um, card has a couple really yeah. cool things going for it. Notably, it is 12 mana, so it does 12 damage off of a Calibrated Blast. Um, it triggers up the Beanstalk, which uh, for anybody following me on Twitter or listening to the podcast the last few weeks knows that I am I am keen on the bean. <laughs> um. <laughs> Some domain zoo decks in modern have been popping up using it to enable stubborn denial. Keen on the bean <laughs> is like that is the next uh coalesce shirt and it's just the dare font. <laughs> yes! Oh my god, someone gets Cedric on the phone. <laughs> I uh <laughs> I'll take royalties on that one. Uh there you go. Coalesce apparel design, by the way. Check them out. Brainstorm Sponsored! Cool. It's, or it's like you wouldn't download a car, you wouldn't go keen on the bean. Like, <laughs> man, you're keen on the bean. Every time I cast a Lightline Binding, I point at my my up the beanstalk and flick yeah. it yeah. because I'm a known bean flicker. Flick that bean and draw a card. <laughs> anyway, so what's the what, what? I'm sorry. What was the uh, what's the pick we're looking at? Sion, Sion of Draco. Draco. Sion of Draco. All right. From Modern Horizons. I'm a sucker for any, like, double-digit mana cost shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. I think my most frequent uh, commander deck that I have never actually built but just has spent the most time in my head rent-free is just some kind of, like, make everything in your deck a lot of mana cost and just do, like, the Delver-style flipping of, like, uh, ba Baleful End from Rise of the Eldritch. Yep. Like, just that kind Pyromancy. of, Pyromancy. Like... Pyromancy? Pyromancy is a four mana enchantment. Pay three, discard a card from your hand at random, deal the damage equal to its mana value. Oh any yeah, X, any of that. Yeah, 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 that yeah. kind of stuff. Uh, Kraken with Cremator. As yeah, as or Gateway. Was just I, I've always like theory crafted this four hundred card deck that I would need to narrow down, and I just can't figure out like who it would be or what colors or just. It was a, just... a a viable modern deck for a hot minute with I mean uh, a Tokflon Worm and the mm -hmm. from returned uh, Guilds of Ravnica. The in the, the like fifteen great mana worm. great worm, yeah. Um, it was a real thing in modern for I me. Mean, like that's why she's firing spike. Just posted a deck list playing four calibrated blasts to reveal oh, Sion of Draco. It was and, a, um, it was a um very saffron fun, olive yeah. thing a few months or yep. a year, uh, some number of months ago. I had people asking me of like, do you have this deck list? And I was like, these are all right. forty set cards. No, but yeah. Sion of Look, Draco I, and Shadow of Mortality are both potentially castable, which is yeah, like we, exciting. We were mining modern with uh, Kragenwood Cremator back in the day. It's all, that that entire archetype is a hit with people because it's so much fun. Yeah. All right, DJ, what are you looking at for pick of the week here? I have something very bread and butter, very simple, very recent reprint uh, card go up if not reprint more. Uh, Vanquisher's Banner. It got hit yeah, in Commander okay. Masters. It was a double digit number. Now it is not. It went as low as three. Now it is high as high as six. It will be back, especially as we go into Ixalan. Lost Caverns of Ixalan is going to have dinosaurs, yeah. probably going to have vampires, probably going to have uh, folk and all the other creature types. Mm -hmm. And as we have discussed, creature types do be good like that. And uh, again, this does need to dodge more reprints. It's It's gotten 
quite a few, I mean, it was originally Ixalan, and then it got quite a few recently. Yep. It was like Commander Lord of the Rings, Commander March of the Machine, Promo Pack, The List, and T- Times Power Remastered. All of those are like post-COVID reprints, I guess is the best way to phrase that, compared to its 2017 card release. Uh, but I mean, it is just, it's Vanquisher's Banner, it's ubiquitous, it goes in the Sliver Precon that people are buying, it, it just goes in everything. All right, there you go. Love it. Okay, well, everyone, thank you for listening. This felt like a very productive episode. I'll say that. We got through a lot of content tonight. Uh, anything uh, we missed? DJ Cass, you want to shout out before we go? Uh, just, uh, I want everyone to be able to just tweet at Corbin and blame him for the episode being short. Uh, we were on such a roll tonight. We were firing on all <laughs> cylinders. But Corbin just happens to have a heart out. I know you guys missed us a couple weeks ago, and you're like, come on, you got to make up for lost time. This was supposed to be an hour and... 12 minute episode but <laughs> no like carbon just has a heart out tonight so just tweet at him but not like not like death ready just like a little annoyed just like passive aggressively right there in that middle is where you live yeah thank yeah. You. yeah yeah i'm glad i gave the floor to you for that thank you everybody for listening this is brainstorm brewery see you next week